So when we have external diffusion over the boundary layer as a series resistance to that combined internal diffusion reaction resistance, uh, we are going to apply the same principles as in theme 6, except that we are modif going to modify our rate at the surface reaction with this catalyst particle effectiveness factor. If I have higher order reactions, uh, or even for first order reactions, and I have a vice prater that is much larger than 50, I can actually apply that apparent rate equation here uh, if I want to write it without considering the effectiveness factor. It is important to notice that the particle diameter will not affect the intrinsic rate constant of a porous catalyst. So if I change the particle diameter, what will change is the catalyst effectiveness factor. Um, and what will also change is the area that I must use, area parameter, area per kilogram parameter that I use to calculate my mass-based rate constant for external diffusion. So here the eta is a function of particle diameter, ki intrinsic is not because it is a porous catalyst type. So for a first order reaction where we have the convenience of calculating an effective rate constant, remember it is not a separate resistance, this internal diffusion step it is used to correct the resistance to the, in, uh, the actual surface reaction, and this eta will be uh, less than 1. Uh, so here it shows that we can actually, by equating these two rates, we can actually derive an overall effectiveness factor. I am not going to test you on the overall effectiveness factor at all. Uh, I find that it just confuses students. So just remember, for first order reactions, this is the form of the effective rate constant, modified by eta. So it is important to understand how both these mass transfer effects will affect experimental observations and how we can make sure that we are free of external mass transfer and or free of internal diffusion effects. So consider a set of experiments where the conversion is measured in a batch reactor for two separate runs, one where the stirrer speed was low and one where the stirrer speed was high, but exactly the same profile was observed. So here, what we can conclude from this set of experiments is that the external mass transfer is negligible. So that is a key word for the bulk concentration is equal to the surface concentration. I can use my bulk concentration in my rate. However, so this term, this resistance is zero. It says nothing about my catalyst effectiveness factor because in this uh, experiment, and none of them, I have varied the particle diameter. The particle diameter stayed exactly the same. So I varied my external mass transfer rate constant because I changed Kc. Kc is a function of or proportional to the stirrer speed to some factor depending on the shape of my reactor and the shape of the stirrer. Side note, in some of the slides and some of the touts, I use uh, the proportionality constant N here, and I, in the past, some students confused this with the reaction order. It's got nothing to do with the reaction order. It is a separate proportionality constant for how Kc varies with stirrer speed. So now, I haven't changed the particle diameter, so I can't say anything about eta yet. Right, so if I do a set of experiments where I change the particle diameter um, while I keep the stirrer speed constant and I observe exactly the same rate profile regardless of whether I have small particles or larger particles, I can also conclude that external mass transfer is negligible and CA bulk is equal to CA surface. In addition, I know that Eta for those experiments must be equal to 1. I am in the regime where the Thiele modulus that is directly proportional to the particle diameter is already small enough for all the particle diameters considered here that eta is equal to 1 and I'm in the reaction rate limited regime. So I can conclude that that resistance is equal to 0. Why? Because Kc, right, I didn't change the uh, stirrer speed, but I know that Kc is also a function of the particle diameter uh, to some factor. And I know that Am 
is inversely proportional to the particle diameter. So if I change particle diameter, I am changing that variable. If it had an effect, it would influence my rate. So that is excluded. But in addition, I've proven by changing the particle diameter that eta is 1 and that I am actually measuring true reaction kinetics in this experiment. It is important to be comfortable with this when you do many of the TATs, especially the last TAT and TAT 7, to distinguish where can I measure, where can I find uh, intrinsic rate data, where is the rate limited by external mass transfer, uh, etc. In experiments or when you use experimental data, it is okay in certain cases when you can extrapolate to use apparent rate data. It is never possible to extrapolate for K rate that was affected by external mass transfer. You cannot duplicate the reactor that the researcher used, his Erlenmeyer flask, his stirrer, uh, exactly. So this must be excluded from your data before you start using that data in any reactor design application.